Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Last week we did the head unit upgrade on the Jetta. This week I'm going to do the speakers. Stick around, let me show you what I got. Okay, I decided to go with these Rockford Fosgate Prime speakers. They are the R165S series. These are six and a half two-way speakers. They look like components because the tweeters are mounted remotely, but there is no crossover. These are very high sensitivity. They do not require that much power to run. Um, but they do give me the flexibility to position the tweeters wherever I want rather than have them down by my foot. Um, so my goal with this car was really just to do uh, an upgrade to the sound system without really having to run an amplifier. So I spec these out to match the specs of the output of the new radio. The new radio puts out 40 watts RMS and 80 watt peak. And these are those are exactly the specs for these speakers from Rockford. So it just worked out perfect. Uh, to make the best of the... Of those speakers i actually got some um speaker rings i got adapters to space them out away, away from the window i got a rib nut set so i can get rid of the rivets and actually use proper hardware for it and we're also going to be doing some sound deadening as well so yeah this is going to sound great and again this is just an oem plus upgrade that i'm really excited about to go along with that head unit there okay to remove the door panel you have uh, four screws and then just door clips uh, t20 down here you got a t27 here t27 under the trim and t27 under the, the window switch trim as well take off those screws and then it's just a matter of popping the door panel lifting it off from here and disconnecting the connector for the switch and the cable for the handle and this thing can come off You see here how the speaker is mounted. It's all rivets there. And we don't like rivets. That's what the rivet gun, or the rib nut gun is over there. We're gonna get drill these out. Okay, we're making progress here. So the guts of the old rivets are all gone. I cleaned up the mess that I made in the inside the door panel. I'm gonna go ahead and open these up so I can put in my rib nut insert. This is an M5. Something else I thought of because I have excess uh, sound deadening is what about the back of the door panel itself? So this here, there's no matting whatsoever. That is the same plastic that's here is the same plastic that's there. There's nothing there to muffle it. I think that I'm also going to go ahead and throw one up here, kind of like fold around the storage pocket that's in the back side here. And then also, I'm going to throw some more up here. All right, so this is what we got so far. I used one full sheet on the back of the plastic door panel here. Put half of it here. This is the back of the pocket. See, it wraps around it here. I just put a little bit there just because it was excess. And then also along the bottom of the storage pocket here. You guys saw me messing around with my <laughs> with the rings. And the inside is actually meant for you to put on the back side of the speaker. So that way there's something there to absorb 
um, those low frequencies there that are coming from the backside. And it kind of helps to like muffle the sound that's happening inside the door panel. And then to prevent additional sound from coming in here, there's a whole sheet in there, half a sheet. And then there's another one that I laid out more or less here against the sheet metal. You kind of see it this way. You see the underside of it there. And it goes all the way up to about here. Let's see if we can catch it here. There you go. Okay, guys, real quick. Finally got them side by side. Here's the original one. Paper. Foam surround. And, you know, it's only a matter of time before this goes out since the other speakers have already started popping. We're not going to use the grill, unfortunately. But there's that. Also for uh, foam surround, but much better quality than that, and it's also new. And notice that this is strictly a woofer, whereas that one has the woofer and the tweeter combined in one piece. That's a two-way speaker. And then here's the tweeter itself, which I'm going to try to mount it on the door panel as if it were the factory one. One more thing to take note of for the installation here is the mounting height. Notice the factory speaker. The mounting height is right here. Mounting point is right here. You can see how shallow the, the magnet sits. Whereas if you compare it to the new one, let's say we line them up right there, look at how much more this one sticks back into the door panel. So that's the reason why I'm going to use the, the spacer here. What that's going to do is that it's going to allow me to raise the surface, the mounting surface. Let's see if we can get this more or less lined up. There you go. You see, now it sticks out a whole lot less. And it's more in line with what the factory one is. So that way I don't have the risk of when the window comes down smacking into it. I don't know if it'll do it or not. Some people have reported that in some speakers they don't need the spacer. I don't want to take the risk. And I only want to do this one time. All right, so I may be overcomplicating it. But this is the way that I'm doing. I'm going to do this. Um, uh, you see, I don't really have much space to get the uh, cables in there. So I'm using that adapter, just plugs and play here, and then plugs into the factory harness, and then it goes in there to connect to the speaker. Obviously, I can't make those connections with the speakers already mounted. So I have to hook them up while the speaker, holding the speaker, and then put it on. But the tweeter, the tweeter also has to run through here and make the connections. So I can't have it mounted just yet so i'm gonna have to do a lot of stuff all together basically once i start it's gonna go fast okay here's how we're looking twitter has been hot glued into place take a look at that nice and solid there in the factory place and i stuffed the wire here Ran it around here, got all my X's in there, and then I have this length here to make my connection on the speaker there once we are ready to put it on. So it's been a few days and I've knocked out this door and the other rear door and the speakers sound amazing. It's nice to actually have some high notes coming from the back here as well. So it sounds more, ba more balanced now. So now it's time to do the front. Now, how to get the panel off. So it's basically the same method as you use the rears for. However, uh, there's an extra bolt behind the cover here. And also, because this trim piece is bigger, instead of having one spring clip here and a spring clip here, you have an additional one here in the middle. Other than that, it's the same procedure as the back. So let's go ahead and get these out.
One thing you need to watch out for is the alarm uh, indicator here. It's this here, so just be careful with it. It does, there you go. All right, this does rotate. So it's typically like this. You can rotate it out and then you have to, this lever, you actually have to pull it away and then it comes off. Uh, that's one. And then these two here, this is for the, uh, what is this? Right down here, the, oh yeah, the lock and lock and the, um, the mirror control. Mirror control is just this. You press down and then for the door, lock and lock. This is this right here. And then there's also the trunk release, which is down here. And you just press down on the, on the lever and you pull away. And look at the front speaker. <laughs> this is one that, that's popped. It doesn't look popped, but it's, I'm really curious about the condition of the magnet behind it because there's no sound coming out of this woofer. So we'll take a look now. All right, so with the back door panels, I was using two of these sheets. One, I would, you know, cut it up and I would split one sheet on the plastic and then another sheet on the, on the sheet metal of the door itself. Um, and that's fine for the back. Uh, I do have some excess sound deadening. So what, I'm, what I did is I cut one, the one sheet extra that I had and I'm going to use an additional half a sheet on the front doors. All right, let me show you what I got here. So there's one up here, in there. That's it for this side. There's not much I can, not much else I can get to. And then on this side, of course, you got the sponge for the speaker ring. You got some more matting there. You got some more matting up here, as well as was the front there. It's hard to see, but again, this is one of those things that it's like the sum of all things. Okay, so now that the door speaker is done, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the tweeter. So the tweeter is, lives in the A-pillar. You see it there on the passenger side, for example. Um, with that said, we need to drop the A-pillar. Now, mind you, there's typically three clips here. Uh, one at the top, middle, and bottom. The first thing you need to do is remove this cover here which is this right here. You just use a prying tool like the ones I have down there on the floor. You pry it out, go ahead and open it up. Then there's another trim that sits here. And that is this bad boy, which I believe, yep, there you go. It sits like this. And the reason you need to take this off first is because this clip sits at the bottom of this one here. You see that, I don't think I broke it. I think it was already like that. But I could be wrong. Maybe it was me with all of my moving around. That's no big deal. But anyway, so you need to remove this first. Then you can go ahead and come up here and start prying. Be very careful because your airbag is sitting here. Once you have it out, 
once you're able to pull it, you kind of have access. I mean, you can move the airbag around a little bit so you can access the actual spring clips. And you see I didn't break any of them. They're still intact. I mean, you just had to pop them off and I was able to slide them back in place, but everything is good. Start here with the power one. What I'm doing is that I'm making sure that they, there's enough meat going to the other side of the lead here. So when the sound of this one is striped, assume that this is the power. I'm just going to make sure that I do the same on the other side. like that. Okay, good to go. So you see now that I reused the original connector there, and there it is. As I said, I used the outer perimeter uh, for mounting surface, and I used and I used hot glue to secure it to the A pillar, and then I dropped the tweeter into it, and then I secured the tweeter itself into the into the face. So now this thing's not moving at all. Perfect. And best of all, you can't tell from outside. Oh, I gotta clean this, <laughs> but you can't tell. Like factory. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. There you go. Walk it in. There you go. There you go. And then you gotta pull back on this rubber so it can actually sit in there. There you go. Like that. And just walk it into place, that's all. There. There you go.
Hey guys, we're done. I am so happy. So obviously I only showed you guys the driver's side of the speaker installs. I, I didn't bother showing you the passenger because why? It's the same thing. Um, with that said, I am beyond happy with this. Uh, sound quality is amazing. The speakers were a perfect pairing to the output of the head unit. And what you call it, you know, there's videos out there on, on YouTube on how you can pick uh, the, the right speaker for the, the setup that you want, etc. I used to do audio systems way back in the day, so I already knew most of it. Um, and I'm definitely happy with my selection. For, for what I needed, this is perfect. Um, and also, there's a significant reduction in outside noise coming into the cabin. Uh, the sound deadening that I did was definitely paid off. It was a lot of work, but man, wow, it definitely paid off. And yeah, I'm just very happy with the outcome. So I hope you guys learned how to do this on your car. Uh, and if you did, if you picked up some tips, go ahead and give me a like, give me a subscription. I got more stuff coming for both cars. Thank you all so much and have a good one.